In this live training today, we're going to cover a few things in Planning Center, uh, creating a new event and scheduling a team for that event, and then also sending the invites to that team. So let's see if we can check this out. Um, in live training, things may go uh, sideways, but let's just see how far we can get with this. I'm going to come into uh, Planning Center Online, and uh, you can get there through services.planningcenteronline.com. Go ahead and log in. You do need admin cr credentials to do the kind of things we're doing today. If we're under the plans section, you can see all the various plans that we have. If you were inside of a plan, um, when you logged in, you may have to go back to the main plan menu to get to your particular campus or event. Uh, let's take a look at production. I don't have any events planned in here, so we're going to go ahead and just create a test event here. Um, so there's various service types. You can add a new service type if you wanted to have something other than these main headings that we're showing here. Um, although we'll just go ahead and stick with the miscellaneous events section. I'm going to choose to add a plan. And this gives us an option to copy some of the template items from a previous event. Um, in this case, I'm just going to go with a no template option, although using templates can make things easier. I will be honest, uh, there is a team member within our organization that is better equipped for many of the planning center related scheduling or um, event creation things. So we would defer to that person in most cases for starting the event, but it's still worth taking a look at what's here in case you are assigned to do that at some point. Back in the planning center here, we're going to go ahead and add this plan. And you'll see here it kind of took me to the Teams where I have an option to import a template or add needed positions. We can also see just the order of this event, which right now there is nothing in the event. Let's go ahead and work on a few things like giving this event a name. Um, so we'll come into <clears throat> Actions. We're going to add a plan title. And this is going to be a production training event. I guess. All right. So now if we were to go back to the main uh, page where all of our events are, we're, we're seeing now this production training event. It doesn't have any dates yet, so let's go ahead and look into adding a date and time. So underneath the time section over here, uh, if we select that, we can choose add and pick a certain date and time. Uh, let's just say we want it to be, um, we'll go for May 18th. This event will be in the evening, we'll go like, uh, let's say 7 p.m. And it'll last for an hour. We'll go ahead and save that. We didn't need to assign any teams yet, we can come back and assign teams later. But now we actually have a service time, Wednesday 7 p.m. If we were to go back to our main menu and take a look at this event, we can see that that information has started to populate here now. So we have a little bit more information related to that event. Let us add some items to the cement. So we're going to use the Add button over here on the top right. We're going to add a header. We'll just drag that in here. And uh, we're going to give that header a name of pre-service. All right, so now we've got a pre-service header. I like to go ahead and add a couple other headers. Um, so this would be uh, service. And then we could obviously do like a post service. So let's try that. All right, three headers, uh, three sections for main, main parts of this event. We're going to have an item. Let's go ahead and add an item in here. And we'll call this guy um, uh, like production arrival. And we'll give it a, a time. We'll give him 10 minutes to arrive. It's going to be pre-service. So we're going to choose before, and um, then if we hit the X button just to close that out, you can see we now have an item in pre-service. It shows 10 minutes worth of time for this, this particular item, and um, that is happening pre-service, so it's grayed out. It's not a part of the main service, so it's kind of grayed out there. Now, I want to change this view so we can see what time that is, time of day, instead of just how much time before the event. So if we go to this uh, columns view option, and we can choose times, and we're showing 7 p.m. because that's when the event starts, uh, you can now see that the production arrival time, being 10 minutes before service, actually is expecting a 6.50 start time for that particular item. Let's go ahead and add another item, and we're going to put this into the service section. 
And as we often do with many of our events, we'll do like a one minute countdown timer. And let's go ahead and call that what it is. All right, so now we have a one minute countdown timer starting at seven o'clock. Um, actually, we probably typically would do that like one minute before seven, but just in this case, we're gonna call it seven o'clock. We'll add another item. Uh, let's say it's a song this time. So I'm gonna drag a song in here. We can use the search tools to find a song. So uh, let's do Celebration Awaits. All right, we see it here. I'm gonna go ahead and select it and it adds it in here. And of course our band would want to choose what key we're gonna do it in, but we could we could make an adjustment here if we wanted. Um, although this is something our worship team would probably manage a lot better than we would. So we've got a timer, we've got a song. Let's add uh, one more item. This will be teaching. We'll do a whole 45 minutes for that teaching. So that puts us starting the um, teaching at 7.05 and ending, um, well, looks like our complete event ends at 7.50 so far. Um, it's not typical that we would have a one hour event and only plan 50 minutes worth of stuff. So let's go ahead and add one last item. Um, and you can also see over here, there are shortcuts that can be used and a little tip here uh, for that. Um, so using the shortcut keys, we'll add the items where we have them. So let's try that. I'm going to try to add an item and I'm just going to hit the letter I, added a new item. This item is going to be um, announcements and send out. Pretty typical for us. And we're going to call that nine and a half minutes. Boom. There we go. Now that we've got all of our items in here, and I realize there's a post-service item here, let's just go ahead and add, I'm gonna hit the little I button, new item, this will be post-service, so this will be like a rotating, whoopsie, must not have had it highlighted yet. Let's try that again, rotating slides, something simple. And this doesn't have to have a whole lot of time, I'm just gonna give it one second. Um, well, I thought it had one, one second. Let's try one minute, <laughs> and uh, this will be after service. So when we close that out, you can see grayed out because it's before. Uh, these items are part of the main service, and this one is grayed out because it's after. And so now we've got our full service planned out. It is expected to take 60 minutes, which is what we were scheduling for. So great, we now have a full event scheduled um, or created. When I create a new event, I always like to add the needed positions first, and then Planning Center helps me to identify which positions I've already scheduled for, which ones are still needed. So let's look at adding needed positions. So if we come into the Teams tab, we can choose Needed Positions. Now in some templates, it's already going to have a pretty large list of team um, options. So in this case, I actually have a whole lot more than what you would typically see. Um, that just has to do with the type of event that we're in. But I do know in this case, I'm going to need a pro presenter operator. So I'm gonna hit one on that. I need a lighting operator. I need a front of house sound engineer. Uh, I'll need three camera operators. Uh, we need broadcast sound. And we need a production lead. Um, let's see, what am I missing here? Maybe a video switcher. Yeah. All right. So we've got all the needed positions selected now. Um, so if we were to come into the order of our event and we just hit done, it sort of locks in the uh, needed positions that we have. So um, I can now start scheduling for these particular positions. There's a couple ways you can do this. You could just select right in here and add a person um, by clicking on where it says it's needed. I could go under teams, same thing, click where it's needed. And let's go ahead and see what that looks like now. I'm going to add myself as the production lead. And in this particular team, it already has me as an available production lead. So I could choose myself, add. And you can see here it's added me in with a yellow highlight and a question mark. That just means that my position is pending and I haven't confirmed. 
Um, let's see about adding someone else. I want a front of house sound engineer. And in this particular event, there are not any sound engineers assigned to the event from like past events. So what we want to do is actually invite a guest for that. So I'm going to invite the uh, production user. Let's see if we can get him in there. We'll add him in. He's set up as the sound engineer, again, with just a pending request. Um, now let's see what that looks like when I want to finalize the request for this event. You can see at the top it says two unsent emails. I'm going to choose send. It brings me up to a template builder. So I've got uh, various templates that I've already done for my emails. And I like using the one you have been requested to serve. That just happens to be a template I like. Uh, you can see that it shows there's two people that are going to receive this request. Um, and there are some basics that will be in this email where they have these brackets and a, you know, a custom little form field. Um, this basically says it's going to add the first name of whoever this is. So the email to me is going to say, hi, Jameson. The email to production users is actually going to say, hi, production. Um, then you've got the body of your email um, and your signature. Uh, signatures are something that you can set up within Planning Center, so you'd want to be uh, have that set up in advance. Um, but it will use your signature. I think my signature just simply says, thanks, Jameson. Um, then below it t talks about what these special uh, fields are. Um, it's given us a note that says the person who receives this email will have an option to accept or decline. Um, so then we hit send, and it sends that email out. It's telling me it went out to two different people. Um, whoever's receiving the production user email, uh, I apologize. You may have a weird email there, um, although nobody's probably checking on that. Now at this point, um, I could... You know, since I'm a, a, a team member on this particular event, um, I could accept or decline this event. And it, it automatically gave me the uh, option right here within the event to accept or decline. Um, Planning Center is linked in a lot of different ways, so I could see uh, my availability to accept or decline when I'm in this specific event. I could go to my schedule, and I could see what kind of things there are. So let's see, this was a... Uh, miscellaneous event for production. Here we are uh, with an option to accept or decline. Uh, so I could do that from here. Or I could go and find the plan. So if I go into plans, um, I've made my way to production, I can go to the plan. And since I'm an admin, I can automatically accept or decline by selecting these options here. So I'm going to go into, um, let me make it so you can see it. If I hover over my name here, I choose the little pencil to edit. Brings me back into a screen that we had seen before. Um, since I'm confirming for myself, I can go ahead and choose confirmed and hit save. And now it will show that I am set up as a confirmed um, team member for this particular event. Now the production user hasn't confirmed yet because he hasn't gotten his emails obviously, but if I had a one-on-one -on -one conversation with him, I might come in here and edit and say he's confirmed or declined, and let's just say he's declined at this point. And we can see here as I hit decline, it shows that he's got a red X, a red circle and an X there with a scratch through. It's clear that this user has declined the event, um, and it adds one more needed position because he declined. So now as I'm taking a look at this event sort of from a, a 10,000 foot view, I can see we actually have a lot of positions that still need to be filled. I have one position that is filled and I can go back in through here and add people individually to these items. Um, we would certainly want to fill a team for everything that shows a needed position, assuming that someone like the production director or maybe the worship director has identified very specific needs for that event. Um, we could even schedule for other teams if we wanted to. Um, so I could add some people in here for worship or uh, maybe a service host, things like that. Uh, but I was really just wanting to look at production for right now. Let's take a look back in the order section and just get a, another view of everything that we've discussed already. We added a service time, uh, which we could certainly add additional times, like say there's a rehearsal. Let's go ahead and work in that. Um, let's say the rehearsal happens at 5 p.m. that day, um, and we're going to assign it to the production team. We'll hit save. Um, so now we actually have rehearsal times as well. 
when uh, a user like myself who's been added to the event receives an email related to the event, it'll have the times of the actual event and the rehearsal time. It's listed in the email and it will also be listed here in the sidebar so that somebody could just quickly jump in there and say, okay, it looks like I need uh, to be there for rehearsals. Um, we also have the teams here and currently it's only showing the production team, but if we have multiple teams, you would see those multiple teams. We could add files to this. So let's just say I had like um, a document that outlined a whole lot more about the event. I could add that file, uh, maybe a special media file that we want people to see. And we could add notes as well. And the notes can be uh, categorized by various things. Now these categories are pre-built categories by um, Planning Center. Uh, so we could use like a general note. And for something like this, we might say um, uh, event planner uh, requests, um, like say no haze in the in, on stage or something like that. Um, there have been some events where they, they like the use of lights, but they don't like the use of haze. So we'll just put that in the notes and that would show up here for anyone who wants to, to gaze into the plan. Um, I hope that's enough to get you started with uh, the basics of scheduling a team. Uh, I will, one thing I didn't mention uh, in relation to creating your schedule for the teams, you could add people in here um, all that you want, but until you send the message, um, let's, uh, let's say regional production, I'm going to add a person in here. That person's going to be assigned to lights. They could sit here for weeks um, listed as, um, you know, just scheduled but not actually confirmed um, or even emailed. They could sit here for a long time without you actually inviting them to the event. A user that's not an admin is not even going to know that they've been tied to this event in any way until you send the email. And so you would want to go in, obviously click the send button and send that email out. But the reason why this is important is because as a production lead, you may want to schedule two or three weeks out in advance and you're still shuffling around the people that you're going to be using for each of those events. Um, so you'd, you'd want to make sure that you um, don't send the email until you're ready but do remember to send the email when you are ready uh, because so many times you can create an event and just forget to send all those emails out and somebody just doesn't even know that they've been invited to join that event. So that's super important. Another thing I forgot to mention is that if you were to try to schedule someone for an event and they have a block out date or they have a serving preference, like a scheduling preference, maybe once a month uh, is their preference and they've already been scheduled that month, the planning center will actually tell you that there's a conflict. And most of the time, it'll, if you hover over the conflict, it'll tell you specifics about it, like you've scheduled somebody outside of their availability. Um, you can bypass that, and you can say, I want to schedule them anyway, or you can just, it'll give you an option to choose somebody different. So just keep an eye out for that whenever you're scheduling as well. I know this is a lot of uh, back and forth and jumbling around, but that's live training. Um, but I did want to give you a chance to see what scheduling looks like within Planning Center. Uh, we'll get into a little bit more about maybe using the matrix view in a future training. So check back for that. Thanks for coming.